Anthropogenic global warming is a grandiose scientific scam of the 20th century. The hockey stick graph, I took one look at this graph and smelled a rat. Literally the greatest imaginable fraud one could find in modern science. This really is the most destructive conspiracy theory that has been invented along with anthropogenic climate change. It's like I woke up in the insane asylum and the patients have taken over. And taken over academia too. Today, from every direction, we are being told all the time that man-made CO2 emissions are to blame for climate change. When you repeat the same thing day after day, it becomes sort of normal, accepted, as if taken for granted. In reality, it's not, but since someone is doing it, then someone benefits from it. So this model of the anthropogenic origin of the current global warming and its threat to humanity is a myth. A separate question is, who needs this myth and for what purpose? To fight CO2, they tell us to shut down plants and factories, stop heating our homes and filling our cars with gasoline. Stop eating meat and stop showering. We are also told that we should breathe less, stop having children, and generally reduce the human population on the planet. And of course, we should pay more taxes. As much as possible. Isn't that lovely? Don't you like to be taxed? It's hard to imagine a better control lever than carbon dioxide to literally to essentially control society. This unequal battle with CO2 has been going on for over 40 years already. But what are the results of this battle? But so far, no measures have been successful. On the contrary, from one climate conference to another, the level of CO2 in the atmosphere only continues to grow, completely ignoring all international rights and norms, as if we are paying for it to grow. If you believe the story, the narrative, the fakery that CO2 is going to kill the earth or kill us or whatever it's going to do. Uh, if you believe that story, then you will be afraid and you will be guilty. And so that makes you open your wallet and send a big check to Greenpeace. These measures will not save the climate. They are not effective and have no effect on actually reducing CO2 emissions into the atmosphere. It has an impact on people and on your wallets. It will affect some of the freedoms that you'll be deprived of, but it won't budge the climate or the weather by even an inch. Let's do some investigation. On what grounds are we being restricted and taxed? Do you know? how much CO2 is actually contained in the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is a trace element. There's very, very little uh, uh, of it. There's, there's only uh, 41 thousandths uh, percent CO2 in the atmosphere. Very little of it. According to the official data, the level of CO2 is 400 ppm. What does this mean? ppm means parts per million. In other words, there are four molecules of CO2 for every 10,000 molecules of air in the atmosphere. But we are told that these molecules trap heat coming from the Earth and warm the atmosphere. But how can four molecules trap heat for 10,000 other molecules in the atmosphere? How can such tiny concentrations have any effect on the climate at all? Even a school student would understand that they can't. That small rise could not possibly cause any kind of climate change. It's, it's, it's uh, close to nothing. You double nothing, you still have nothing. Hold on a second, though. It's not just humans that add CO2 to the atmosphere. There are also natural sources such as oceans, volcanoes, trees, and marshes. How much CO2 does humanity produce, then? The established human contribution to the overall increase in CO2 concentrations since 1750 over the entire industrial era has been estimated by various researchers to be between 1% and 12%. All of humanity is responsible for only 5% of annual CO2 emissions. The other 95% is what is emitted from the oceans and land. This is a natural cycle. 
If we consider that 0.03% of the natural CO2 was already in the atmosphere before the human contribution, then the anthropogenic CO2 will be between 1 to 12 ten thousandths of a percent of the total atmosphere. That means that a human has added between 1 and 12 molecules per million of other molecules in the atmosphere. In the meantime, we are being robbed by carbon taxes and forced to reduce our already negligible concentrations of CO2. Even if we stopped all the factories and plants in the world, and even if we stopped breathing, it would result in a CO2 reduction of less than 1 ppm out of 400 ppm by 2050. Meanwhile, disasters are already destroying lives and entire countries for completely different reasons. CO2, let alone humans, has no effect on warming whatsoever. There is no correlation at all between carbon dioxide and global warming. We had a, a period of global cooling from about 1945 to 1980, during a time when CO2 was rising rapidly. And so there's no correlation here at all. If you look at the data over the past 160 years, you will see that despite all the efforts of humankind to emit more CO2, this gas could not decide whether to heat the atmosphere or cool it. Similarly, before the industrial age, the planet heated and cooled on its own without any help from humankind. What effect is CO2 having on global temperatures right now? In 2019, during the pandemic, humankind significantly reduced its CO2 emissions. The entire world was under quarantine. Plants and factories were shut down, and the air in cities was cleared of exhaust fumes. However, the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere continued to grow, regardless of the quarantine. If there was a human effect, if the humans were causing this rise in the rate of rise, then when humans stop using hydrocarbon fuels uh, for some significant period, as we have two examples now, 2010 and now recently, then you should see likewise a change in that curve, a slowdown in the rate of rise in that curve. But this is not observed whatsoever. The main orchestrator of atmospheric CO2 is the ocean. How dare you? Since about 95% of the Earth's carbon dioxide is dissolved in its waters. When the ocean heats up, it releases CO2 into the atmosphere. First comes the change in the sea temperature. A little bit later, the land temperature red, and then about one year, 11 months or 10, 11 months, the carbon dioxide changes. And when the temperature at the sea goes down, the carbon dioxide goes down 10, 11 months later. In other words, the increase in carbon dioxide is a consequence of the heating, not its cause. And humanity has nothing to do with this process, nor does it have anything to do with climate change. But if CO2 increases naturally, it must intensify the greenhouse effect anyway, right? That is absolutely not the case. The most important greenhouse gas is water vapor, whose content in the atmosphere is 50 to 100 times more than all the CO2. And it is water vapor that creates up to 95% of the greenhouse effect. In other words, the content of water vapor in the atmosphere on average is 5,000 times higher than the content of anthropogenic carbon dioxide. So the greenhouse effect of CO2 is extremely low. Is there one at all? According to theoretical calculations, the increase of CO2 in the atmosphere has a cooling effect. Everybody says, well, greenhouse gases are warming the atmosphere, but no, they're not. It's quite clear that greenhouse gases cool the atmosphere. 70% of Earth's cooling is caused by infrared active gases. And now we can ask a million dollar question. What is another name for infrared active gases? It's the greenhouse gases. Some colleagues, I have done experiments to see if CO2 can heat or carry heat. So we have built small greenhouses and tried to heat it by the sun outside or inside with the artificial heating. We were able to show that um, carbon dioxide stops uh, radiation, but we were not able to show any, any heating. This experiment showed that increasing the concentration of CO2 only slows down the heating of the atmosphere. And another question remains, why are natural sources emitting more and more CO2 today? Ice cores from the last pre-industrial 100,000 years when there were no cars or factories, 
contain CO2 concentrations that are well over today's 400 ppm. For example, between 700 and 2500 ppm. In the ice cores, they say, well, there's a higher concentration of CO2. For some unknown reason, however, these data began to disappear from the articles in 1985, which strangely coincided with the establishment of the Advisory Group on Greenhouse Gases that later became the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Our planet is currently going through a period of global climatic catastrophes occurring cyclically every 12,000 years. During this period, due to the changes within the planet, volcanoes and earthquakes become more active, causing magma to ascend and the ocean to heat up enormously. Heating of the deep ocean and awakening volcanoes are causing the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere to increase rapidly, and this happens every 12,000 years. This is an IQ test. If you're too stupid to understand this, instead you're thoroughly brainwashed by governments to think global warming is caused by your car, your hibachi, um, you breathing too much and cow farts. You're too stupid for this discussion at all. You're gonna become like the dinosaurs extinct and you should be, you're too stupid to survive. It's time to ask every lying scientist, where to and why was our money unreasonably spent? Why was our money wasted to the wind? If this was a false theory, then why did they shut the mouths of honest scientists. While they are creating an illusion of fighting with a negligible amount of CO2, millions of people are dying, cities are being destroyed, and the number of climate refugees is growing. And we are fast approaching the collapse of the planet because of the 12,000 year cycle. And due to our carelessness, the only way to escape the escalating disasters for us is to unite in order to build the creative society. Only together can we create a better world for our children and save billions of human lives. Our future depends on each and every one of us.